Hello friends and welcome to my computer screen. Today is Tuesday which means that it's time for another scrapbooking tutorial video and today we're starting again in Photoshop Creative Cloud. If this is your first time with me, hello. My name is Crystal and I am super excited that you are here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you can see all of my future tutorial or crafty videos and let's go ahead and jump into today's content. So last week I started a new tutorial series all about digital stamps and we spent the day or the the tutorial talking about brush stamps which are one of the two different file types that digital stamps will come in. So the other file type is what we're going to cover today and those are digital PNG stamp files. So what are PNG files? A PNG file is going to be a separate file for each individual stamp image. So you will have to go into your documents and open up each one individually for you know the ones that you want to use. PNGs also are unique or unique from uh, the brush stamps because when you apply them onto a photo using copy and paste that stamp actually becomes its own layer which means that you can edit it once it is placed onto the photo uh, in addition to before it placed on the photo so you can there are two moments when you're able to edit and move that stamp around like brush files PNGs are also highly customizable you can change their size, their color, you can alter them and take portions out, you can mask with them, you can multicolor them, and so much more. Those are the things that I'm going to show you guys later in the video, but first let me show you how to actually open up the PNG files and use them in their most basic form. So opening up a PNG file in Photoshop is actually pretty easy. You're just going to go up to File and Open, uh, pull open the file that's got the, the stamp images that you want to work with, pick the one that you want to open, and either double click it or hit the open button down at the bottom. And that is going to pull open your stamp into its own document just like this. Now you'll notice the background has kind of a checkered look to it. That's because it's signifying that there actually is no background behind the stamp. So when you copy it and paste it onto an image or onto a card, there will not be a background behind it. So now I'm going to pull open a photo and I actually decide to use a different stamp than the Celebrating Friendship just because I wanted one that was a little bit, I don't know, more bold to work with or just one that would go on this, on this photo nicely. So I end up choosing the Love You Because stamp. And this is the stamp I'm gonna work with for the rest of today's tutorial. So from here, I'm just going to go up to select all and then hit uh, copy and paste. Now you can use short keys, so control A, control C, control V would be select all, copy and paste. And it's going to go onto the photo just like this, totally bold and exactly how it was in the other document. So now let's talk about resizing our stamps. You can resize them my favorite way to resize them is just once I've got them on the document I want them to go on. So with the layer selected, you're going to have all of the like corners around it that you can pull on. So I just grab one of the bottom corners or one of one of the actual corners and pull on it until it expands open or you know gets bigger or smaller. And then once you hit the enter button, it will like become more clear. So sometimes when you um when you increase the size, it pixelates it, but once you hit the enter, it will clear it all up and it will look nice again. So once you have your stamp sized the way that you like it, the next customization that we can do is to recolor it. Recoloring you can do, there are a lot of options for how you can recolor your stamps. And I'm gonna to try to take you through as many as I know. So the first one is to go ahead down to your uh, color palette button which is the one that's now it's a little square that's lit up red when you click on that it allows you to choose a different color then I went to my paint bucket and I just clicked on each individual letter in that stamp set and every time I clicked on it it would recolor that section of the stamp then I can do the same thing copy the whole thing you know control a or select it all copy it and paste it onto the photo 
Another tool that you can use to help you adjust the colors of your stamp is the hue and saturation adjustment tab. So when you are clicked into this, if your stamp is a color, you can use the hue slider to change the color of the entire stamp all at once. It just makes it easier so you don't have to use your paint bucket. You can also use the saturation to make it either duller or brighter for whatever color you have picked. And then you can use the lighten tab to make it lighter or darker. All the way dark would, would make it black and then all the way light would make it white. So it's just another way to play with colors without having to use your paint bucket to click on every single letter inside of the stamp. Um, okay, so the next thing I'll show you is how to create multicolored stamps. And this is something that is very much unique to PNG files. I, I do not know of a way to do this right now in, um, in, a, in a brush file. So what you can do with PNGs is since we click on each individual letter to color it, we can actually color different letters with different colors like this one. So I have love in blue, you in orange, and because in red. So it just allows us to play a little bit more with the colors of the stamps in this sense. And it's definitely something I like to do. This is another fun technique to use when playing with color too. And that is to layer a second stamp in the background that is colored either black or white and use it as an outline on the stamp in front of it. Just something fun uh, when playing with colors. So uh, what I'm doing right now is just copying and pasting a whole bunch of these over just so you guys can see how they were all different layers uh, in that layer panel to the right. So that's again something that's very different with PNG files versus uh, brush stamp files. Now you can also recolor your stamps once they are on the photo where you've placed them. And that's what I'm showing you right here. So I have already added that stamp set to this image and now I'm going in and recoloring those words. That might be something that you can do with brushes. I actually didn't test that. So there is potentially a way to make them um, multicolored as well. So now let's get into the next customization option, which is working with opacity or like how see-through the stamp is. So what I'm going to do here is control also select the whole canvas, go over to my photo and um, paste it onto my photo. So once I have it pasted onto the photo and sized, you know, however big I want it to be, I am just going to make sure that I have the stamp image selected in my layers panel. And then I can use this slider bar or this uh, field next to opacity that will change the opacity of just the layer that is selected. So then I can get it however I want it and it will, you know, apply that to just my stamp. Next, let's talk about altering stamps. Now, this is something that is unique to PNGs, and basically all you're going to do is pull up a stamp, and let's say we have this one right here that says love you because, but we only want the words love you, and we wanna get rid of the word because. All you have to do is go to your eraser tool and erase the portion of the stamp that you don't want to show up. So this is really cool because it allows you to use some of the stamps that you have already in order to make different sentiments with those same stamps. You can save them if you want and make new files um, or, you know, you don't have to save them. But then when you go over to the photo or the canvas that you're working with, you can, you know, copy and paste over just that sentiment that you have left so like here you can see i put that love you stamp on here a couple of times and just layered it up so it's really cool now this also leads into our next customization which is creating new sentiments by co by combining stamp sets so for example i am going to take this one that says love you because and i am going to combine it with a different stamp set from ali edwards from her watch story stamp so i'm going to open up this one that says totally love watching this because i like that word totally and if i combine that with my love you because i could take away the because and take away the 
love watching this and make a new sentiment that says, um, totally love you. And then I can, you know, combine that down into one single stamp set and use that on a photo or on a canvas that I'm working on. Now you could totally keep these separate and have the totally portion be one stamp and the love you portion be another stamp and, you know, move them around individually. But if you wanted to create a new stamp set and not have to fuss around with different portions, you can also just merge the layers, you know, copy them together, merge them together, and use it as all one stamp set. So that's what I'm gonna show you right here. So now I've got this love you that I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it over onto the totally canvas. Then I am going to select both of those stamp layers, right click and hit merge layers. And that's going to create this as one single, uh, one single layer that I can then copy and paste onto a photo or a canvas, just like that. So it's just a super fun way to take some of these stamp sentiments that you already have, break them apart, and create new ones for whatever project it is that you are working on. Next, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, one last customization that you can do with PNGs, and that is masking stamps with pattern paper or journaling cards or, you know, whatever. So I am going to pull up this Love You stamp, and I'm going to grab a a patterned journaling card from the Allie Edwards Play Story Kit. And what I'll do is copy the entire canvas and paste it right on top of that stamp set. Then we're going to right click on the layer for the journaling card and select create clipping mask. What this will do is clip that paper onto your stamp set. Then you can merge those layers together copy it and paste it onto a photo or on a canvas you're working on and you've got a super cool stamp right there on your photo. So some final thoughts for you guys about PNGs. So PNGs are definitely my preferred file type when it comes to digital stamps. I just know I feel a little bit more comfortable working with them versus working with brushes. But uh, like I said last week, I had to do a lot of research in order to gain a better understanding of brushes. And um, now that I know more about them, I can definitely see myself using them more in the future, especially for things like making background papers. So um, yeah, I hope you guys, I hope you guys have learned some new things and some new techniques that you can do with these PNG digital files or even with the brushes from last week. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to go check it out. I will, uh, at some point in this video, I'm sure I've already included a link for you guys to go check that out if you want to. Next week, we are going to look into some different things that we can make for scrapbooking specifically using stamps. So things like journaling cards, patterned papers, embellishments, all of that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in seeing how these stamps can be used in action, make sure to come back next Tuesday and check out the tutorial video that will take you through the process of how to actually put these, these stamps to use. All right, you guys, so that is going to uh, finish this up for us today. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them uh, to the <laughs> to the best of my knowledge. And um, until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I will catch you all in the next video. <laughs> Bye now.